Hey everybody, Nina here. I wanted to do a little like review walkthrough of one of my favorite tools. I was introduced to this tool by Niche Site Lady on Twitter. She's so epic, highly recommend you check out her Twitter and her newsletter. She sends super actionable tips every single week. Um, and she introduced me to this free tool in 2022, I think like mid 2022, and I became like deeply obsessed. Um, I do hyperfixate a lot, and so I hyperfixated on this hardcore. So what the heck is searchresponse.io? Well, when you're writing blog posts, um, you want to have an FAQ section. That's really important to help you rank for good long tail keywords, especially these people also ask question keywords. And the old school way of finding them was to come to Google. You typically do this in an incognito window, but for the sake of this recording, um, so you didn't have to see how many tabs I otherwise have open on all of my other <laughs> um, windows, I just put it in like a normal tab or a normal um, Google search. So we have people also ask, and there are four here. But if you click on the first one, you'll notice that two more appear. And if you click on the next one, another two appear. And it keeps going, so on and so forth. And we used to have to sit here and click on them for eons. Most people didn't even bother clicking on them because they would just look at the first four and then go with that and then move on and ignore any others that there are, even though a lot of them are really, really strong. So with searchresponse.io, this is completely free. They have a paid plan. You don't need it. Um, you don't need to do this anymore, which is so great because I'm all about like, lazy income basically like doing things as easily as possible as fast as possible so when we go to searchresponse.io um we'll just look at the pricing quickly to explain like why you don't need the starter pack so i use this free one here it is zero dollars per month you get 10 searches per month and since most of us are only doing about that many posts per month that's really all you need um, you will get 50 rows. Basically, it means that like, um, I'll show you how that works in a second, but essentially per search, you're going to get 50 question queries unless none exist. <laughs> so for example, if I just put in the word Rome, it'll give me 50 of these questions here that have the word Rome in it. But if I did something that was like helicopter tours of Rome, that's very specific. It might be a bit too challenging. You might only get like 10 or something. Um, so 500 rows total. Uh, and then I honestly do not use the people also search for and related searches with it. I just don't find it as helpful for those. And those are really easy to find in key search. Um, that's these ones down here. You can find them in key search so much easier. So you don't need this. And then you're not able to download them on the free plan. You don't need to download them. Um, I just open a Google Sheet beside this and then I copy and paste the ones that I want. And that's really all I need to do. In fact, you can even just copy and paste them right into your outline if you were outlining in that moment. So you don't even need a Google Sheet for them. So yeah, I, totally fine there. Now, the only time I tried the starter plan for one month because they had um, a Black Friday deal. So it was like $29 a month or something, like a little bit cheaper. Um, or maybe you got more searches. I don't remember. But I lit, like I did not need it. I canceled it immediately after. <laughs> um, so you get 200 searches per month instead. You get more rows per query and then more total rows overall. And then you get more of these other ones. Again, you don't need. Um, and you'll get to be able to download the CSV file of it. So the reason I tried this was mostly because I was doing a massive content audit or I was supposed to be. I started it and then I got too busy and I stopped it. So it didn't really help me at the time anyway. Um, but it meant that I could look at like, I have about 270 posts on my site now. So I was able to like look at all of these and see like, okay, for 270 posts, I needed to do these searches essentially. And not all of them, a lot of them are no index because they were before I knew how to do anything right. So I think only about like 180 of them are actually real posts. Um, so that's why I did that. And to be honest, even then I didn't find I needed it. Like it was still not really worth the money, um, even though it's not that much money, but I'm all about like save your money for where like you actually need to use it. Um, another reason that like this could be useful for like one month, not 
ongoing is if you have a niche destination site. So for example, if your site is on Rome, you could find all of the queries basically out there for Rome, and then you could apply them in future to a bunch of different posts. So that would be the only reason I would buy this. Um, I'm not sharing an affiliate link, like this is not an affiliate thing. I'm just telling you like this is something that you can do if you want. I would just stick with the free one. It's really easy and simple. And if you max out your free version, if you are logged out, like I'm logged out right now, I'm not logged in. If I put in the word Rome, and you can see it automatically defaults to the US, you can change this, um, or no, you can't change this, never mind. Sorry, my bad. I've never tried to change it before. <laughs> um, but you just put in the keyword that you want. And so you can see here, it says for best results, use phrases that are one to three words long. So you're not gonna put in your whole keyword um, if you're looking to get as many results as possible. However, if you are trying to get only ones that specifically have your whole keyword in it, then you do wanna use your keyword. And we'll do some examples, which is why I'm logged out because I only have the free account. So I put in Rome, I hit enter, it takes a moment. I'm on hotel Wi-Fi right now, so it might take a little bit longer than usual. Oh, that was really fast, that's good. Apparently um, the IHG I'm in has very good Wi-Fi. <laughs> so here you can see what the results look like. So I'm gonna explain a bit about what these all are, but you can see it gives you 10 results free. And so that's still better than having to like pay for more. Cause to be honest, a lot of hyper specific posts that you're gonna write are really only gonna have 10 to 20 anyway that show up. So I think it's totally fine to stick with the free version. Use your 10 searches per month. Once you max those out, you can even do that old like nonsense thing of using like three different emails to get like 30 searches a month. I don't do that, it's too much work for me. Um, and I don't remember passwords at all to save my life. So um, instead I just log out and use this uh, instead. So here you can see what's happened is I put in the keyword Rome. And so each of these has the word Rome in it. That's how it pulls these. So it's pulling based on any of the question queries that has whatever words you put in, in it. it does not have to be exact. So if I did helicopters in Rome, it might say, or pardon me, if I did helicopters Rome, it might return results that say helicopters in Rome. It's smart enough to kind of break it up a little bit, but it has to have every word that you put into it in here. And that's where you get trouble where you're doing something like helicopter tours in Rome, because if it's just, just a question of like, how much does a helicopter tour cost? Or um, can helicopters fly in Rome? Since all of those words aren't in it, it won't show up down here. So again, not a perfect science, but kind of the best thing we have. Now, broad is going to be where it doesn't need to be um, like fully together. So for example, helicopter Rome would become helicopter tours in Rome, and that's fine but phrase is kind of like putting quotes around it. So it would mean that helicopter tours in Rome or helicopter Rome has to show up exactly like that. I don't do that. I don't think it's worth it. So I just stick with broad. It's super easy that way. Um, you can also change the data to be recent or all. I leave it at all. Um, I've never tried recent really. I don't really think it much like significantly changes things. Um, I don't look at the branded stuff because this is more about... Um, like, yeah, if it contains like Amazon or something or for uh, like, I guess if you're doing a product review, but it doesn't really matter to you, to be honest. Um, okay, so what's happening over on this side over here? This is essentially um, kind of adding keywords to the search result you had. So if I search Rome, it's showing me that um, 7,889 of the results include the word ancient. So I can say, okay, that's not what I intended or it is. If I want to add it, I would drag this little thing over to the plus icon. Or if I want to say, I don't want any results that include the word ancient, I drag it over to the remove icon. And that would just get rid of any results that had like ancient Rome in it instead. So this one here about what are the three social classes of ancient Rome, that would go away. And you can do it for all of them, but every time you do this, it counts as one search. So that's why instead to avoid having to like use up our searches that way, we would customize our search term instead. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, I don't really look at domains, but essentially this is showing like how many that individual domain is ranking for of these. Um, and so you can search like if your competitor ranks for a bunch of them, um, you would need the paid plan for that. Again, not massively worth it. Um, 
but you can then find instances where maybe a competitor is ranking for it and how you can kind of take it away from them. So let's get to the actual results now. What is happening over here? Because it looks pretty different to anything we've ever seen with other keyword research tools. So it orders them by popularity, and popularity means um, it's not like a, an impression count the way that a monthly uh, page view is. Instead, popularity is every main search term that this shows up as a people also ask for. So basically on this page, all these ones that show up here, they get one point for, being a, um, for showing up under the search term things to do in Rome. So if I search just Rome and it showed up, that would mean it has two popularity sort of a thing. And so basically, if each of those search terms has a minimum traffic of 10 monthly page views, then we would multiply this by 10 and we'd get 15,950 um, for the impressions that that would get. And that really increases your ability to get click throughs and to get like people's eyes on your site. And the greatest part of this is that these are frequently asked questions most of the time. So you can add them in, in like 50 to 60 words and then get thousands of impressions. It's so simple, it's so, so good. And when you pair this with FAQ schema, which is free with Rank Math and free with Yoast, um, then you really increase your chances of ranking for it as well. And then it's just like instant traffic in your pocket. It's so cool. So here is the actual question itself. These are going to be the questions that you see here, and you're going to want to copy and paste them directly. Like You want to make sure you are not changing up the way that this is phrased. Um, you will notice that sometimes they are pretty similar. So we have what is the cheapest month to fly to Rome and what is the cheapest time to fly to Rome. And I often get asked, okay, like, should I use both because they're pretty similar? Do I just use one? What do I do? My answer, kind of like when I tell people, like, is it the same keyword or not? I say, look at what's ranking for it. If the same site is ranking for it, then it's basically the same question. But for each of these, you can see best month, it's travel.us news. For cheapest month, it's Mamondo, or Mamondo, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I've only ever read it. For cheapest time, it's Kayak. So these are three different sites ranking, and that means you need to answer them separately. And with FAQs, a lot of times they do get pretty similar. Um, so it's okay to have repetitive FAQs that seem pretty close to each other. There's a reason that we like do put them at the bottom of the post anyway. So like the people that get there are pretty dedicated and they don't mind if we are going into like a lot of detail on the same thing. And so here the URL that it shows is the exact URL for the page that is ranking for this. So if I click to like the Rome guy, I think it said Roman guy, the Roman guy, um, I will be able to find whatever information, um, or pardon me, I would be able to go to the direct page that has the information that is being pulled for that. Now if I want to check what information he is ranking for for it, again I would usually do this in an incognito, but I would just search it, and then here you can see you'll get like the little snippet. And so he actually has it as a header, it seems. Uh, where is he? So here we go. You can see the following US cities have direct flights to Rome. And you can see it's super short. Like this is not very long at all. So like this is the kind of thing that you can do and then get so many impressions. And impressions lead to click-throughs, which means traffic on your site. And then that can help you, um, yeah, get the traffic to get ad revenue. It can also help you make affiliate conversions if you add these to affiliate posts. Yeah, there's just so many ways to use this. Related people also ask, I don't use, but essentially it's just like similar questions, but they're all related. So now let's do Rome tour instead. And let's look for something that's a little bit more detailed. So here you can see instead, like first of all, the questions change drastically. From like 65,000, we go to 113. And to be honest, like after a certain point, they all start being like one in like for popularity, which is why, again, even though it seems nice to have 200, um, that you get like a thousand search for 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 each of them. Really the first like 50, I would say, max are actually helpful. And the top 10, especially like the more niche you get, are really all that are gonna have decent popularity scores. 
I will write on stuff that just has like a one if I think it's helpful, but most of the time it has a one because there was something that's a more common version of it above. So for example, do I need a tour guide in Rome? Maybe below a one would be, do I need a tour guide in Rome, Italy? That sort of a thing. Um, and I would just want to target the higher one. So here we get like specific questions instead. And you can see that we have like tour in Rome, but tour guide in Rome. That was what I said about the broad before, where um, it's breaking up our uh, keyword a little bit. So if I were to turn on phrase, it would take this one away because tour Rome is not right next to each other. So the way that you can play around with this, you'll have to kind of get a groove for your own niche. It depends a little bit based on your niche and your destination as to like exactly the way this works um, because it changes based on the specific keywords that you're using. So for example, if I'm writing a post on like scuba diving tours in Belize, um, the way that I approach that is I would for, probably do scuba Belize because people will ask questions in different ways. So we want to like go away from the idea of long tail keywords here. We want to go towards like a root keyword which is like the root is just the most basic parts of the keyword. So for example, like scuba diving tours in Belize, scuba has to be in that for it to exist and Belize has to be in it. We don't necessarily need to pull the word tour because oftentimes this is supplementary information to the tour post. And then we want the broad, that way we get some variations of it. And so like I said, when you're logged in, you'll get 50. So you'll get more than this, which is nice. Um, you don't need to include all 50 in your post. It's gonna be a lot if you do. And sometimes they're not hyper relevant. Like for example, in this one with like Rome tour, um, we have like stuff about tour guides. Then we have like a hop on hop off bus. If that's not what you're focusing on, then don't include it. Like you do not have to include all of these. So. It's gonna take a bit of like variation to get this right for like exactly what you want. Um, basically, the better way to do this is like if you are focused on a specific destination or travel type, you'll start to like amass keywords <laughs> that like um, through this that are pretty easy to do. So if I'm writing maybe 10 posts on Toronto for a like pillar that I'm doing, um, I would save the ones that I'm not using for every single one and then refer back to them later because maybe in another post in the pillar I would need it, but I might not need it in that first primary post. Um, as well, you're going to have to change things up a bit because maybe Scuba Belize has like three results. Then you can just search scuba diving or scuba diving tour or just Belize. And those are going to get you more general things for sure, but if they're relevant enough that they would help people doing a scuba diving tour in like whether or not it's in Belize, it's worth including. So I do have another video um, on my YouTube here about how to use FAQ schema with um, rank math. It's the same for Yoast, it looks exactly the same, so it works for both. Um, but I really pair these two strategies together because just writing on these as an FAQ, just in normal text on your site, it doesn't signpost it to Google the same way. So when you include these, I do recommend adding that in um, to increase your ability to rank beyond just like writing a good response to these. Um, yeah, but add this to your posts and honestly watch the page views roll in. It is super exciting, super easy. Um, and I don't know why more people don't talk about this. And yeah, thank you to Niche Site Lady for bringing this into my life and therefore bringing it into your life. So yeah, again, totally free. Um, if you need to do the starter plan, I would say do it once and then you're done. You don't really need it beyond that. But even then, like I'm currently doing that content audit I was supposed to have done in like November. Um, I'm doing it now and I'm doing it without the paid plan and it's worked totally fine. So yeah, uh, this is a great tool. Again, it's just searchresponse.io, free plan, but you can also just search not logged in and you'll just get 10 results, not 50. Um, they do have some more information on like how it works and where it came from, um, which is how I learned how to use it. But yeah, it's pretty simple. And it's just about getting into the habit of kind of untraining yourself from doing hyper niche searches like you would do on Key Search or Ahrefs or SEMrush or wherever to try and find long tail keywords. We have to like unlearn that and go back to like the simple root keyword that like 
our first week into our site we thought was a keyword when or our first week into seo because let's be real most of us our first week in a site we didn't know what seo was <laughs> took me four years so yeah um yeah but have fun and i think this is a really great strategy if you want to um show me like how you use it feel free to yeah share your results in the comments or on any of my platforms like my free facebook group um which is seo for travel bloggers or on my instagram at nina clapperton and just let me know like how it's working for you